Following on from our last video, I will talk today about the phantom black dog and the spirit of Barney who wanders the lanes. The black dog is a motto of a ghostly or demonic entity found primarily in the folklore of the British Isles. It is essentially a nocturnal apparition and in some cases a shapeshifter that is often associated with the dead. I will now read to you about my parents' first encounter with this apparition. My parents were curious about Sharon Rectory and the amazing stories that was heard throughout their childhood. One bright summer's night in 1988, they decided to venture down to the back entrance of Sharon Rectory. The laneway was overgrown with high trees and hedges on each side. As they drove down the narrow laneway, they came to a dead end. There was two white rusted gates that lay between a man-sized stone pillars, which blocked the entrance into the grounds. They parked the car tightly against the gate, both slowly building up the courage to get out of the car and explore the ruins of the rectory. Before they came to a decision on whether or not they would get out of the car, they noticed a large black dog run towards the gate. The dog seemed to come from nowhere and was charging directly for the car. Suddenly it jumped straight through the closed gates and ran up to the side of the car, then disappeared. Dad put the car into reverse and backed up the laneway towards the main road. When leaving the laneway, they saw a thick black rope tied from one side of the lane to the other, which hadn't been previously. While they reversed towards the rope, they noticed it had three large knots equally tied within the length of the rope. They didn't notice the rope crossing the lane 10 minutes before. It seemed strange to say the least. Confused by what had happened, they couldn't explain how this large black dog had been able to run straight through closed gates without hesitation or injuring itself. Later when they spoke about their experience to people, they were told that the black red-eyed phantom dog as a hellhound and supposedly had been seen before on the grounds of the rectory. This hellhound seemed very unrealistic Although my parents just laughed about it and thought there had to be some kind of logical explanation. But little did they know this dog would make an appearance again in the near future. Growing up with so much space surrounding my home, it was a dream. I loved the outdoors. As soon as I came home from school, I was straight outside. One afternoon in May, while I was out walking my dogs, we started to run towards the back lane. When coming through the darkness of the trees, the dog stopped to bark ferociously into the hedge. I stopped and stood there for a moment to see what the dogs were barking at. They seemed agitated and continued to growl and bark at something or nothing. I was curious and went in to check. I thought it was a cat or a rabbit they had spotted, but I couldn't get close enough to see. When I walked by the hedge, I jumped a large black dog. It was almost twice the size of my dog's. I couldn't believe it. It looked at me with piercing red eyes and had an aggressive feel about it. However, the strange dog turned and ran towards the trees to the back lane. Both my dogs ran after it. I was scared that they might challenge this creature to a fight. They ran through the hedge, barking while looking for it, but it was gone. I couldn't believe what I had saw. It had happened so fast that I had to stop and think, what did I just see? I doubted myself yet again, but the reactions of my dog said otherwise. I ran back into the house. I couldn't get to the door quick enough to tell Mum. She stood in shock while I explained what had happened. It was only then she told me about her and Dad's experience with a strange dog 10 years previous before they bought the house. This black demon dog, we assumed, stalk the grounds. Since experiencing this hellhound, more stories about this creature surfaced as my parents told friends about what we saw. It seemed that we weren't the only people who have seen this dog on the grounds of Sharon. I'm going to read to you the parts in the story where I talk about Barney. Barney was known to be one of the Waller's servants who mainly served and helped the Reverend John Waller. 
As Reverend Walla was paralysed due to an accident in his younger years, Barney assisted him in everyday care. It is said that Barney would walk the laneway at night to close the gates before retiring to his slumber. Roughly a week later, this demon dog was a thing of the past. Yes, it scared me when I saw it, but I didn't let it stop me from spending time outside. One Friday evening, after I finished school, I came home, got changed and went straight outside on my bike. As I cycled towards the back laneway, I noticed a strange man wearing all black walking towards the house. I stopped as he came towards me. He wore a long black trench coat that seemed to reach his ankles. His black hat slightly shaded his pale white face, which was expressionless. He almost looked grey in colour. He walked really slowly as he got closer to me. As I stood there watching him, he looked really strange. I had never seen this man before and I didn't know if I should say something or just run away and get him home. As he came closer, I panicked. I shouted over to him, are you looking for my dad? But there was nothing. Just silence. After a moment, he turned and slowly walked back towards the laneway. Within a moment, he disappeared. All I could think was, why are these strange things always happening to me? I felt like my days consisted of seeing something, fearing it, then telling my parents. I felt sorry for mum. I knew she was scared herself and I probably worried her even more. I had to tell her about the strange man with the black coat. Weirdly, I wasn't the only one who seen the strange man. When my parents bought the house in the beginning of 1995, during renovations, my great aunt kept her horses on the grounds. She often called in the evenings to check on them in the fields in the back lane. Upon her visit one evening, she walked down the back laneway to the entrance of the field. She couldn't see any sign of her horses, so she jumped the gate and went a few feet into the field. She called them towards the gate, but they seemed to ignore her and graze on. She waited for a moment before turning and jumping over the gate. Just then, she noticed a man wearing a long black coat standing in the middle of the laneway. She thought this man was looking for my parents. She shouted to him, can I help you, sir? But he didn't reply. He stood there for a few seconds before turning and walking away. She told my parents he literally disappeared. She thought this strange, but she knew shared her a history of wandering apparitions and lost souls. I think she saw things as a child when she and my grandfather worked on the grounds of Sharon, but they rarely would talk about what they experienced. Now I will read to you a part within the book where both my kids seen this tall, dark man. One dark Thursday evening, as I lifted the boys from mums after work, I drove down the back laneway to the gatehouse. As I pulled up to the front of the house, Noah began to shout at me. I stopped the car and said, what's wrong? He continued to tell me that I had ran over a man that was standing in the middle of the driveway. But of course, I didn't see anyone. I asked him what he saw. He told me it was a tall man wearing a hat and a black coat. This to me sounded like the same spirit man that I had seen as a child. It bothered me slightly. Even though the spirit meant no harm, I felt nervous for the boys. Noah was now at the age where he questioned things. He continued to ask where the man went. To be honest, it did scare me. We still had to get out of the car in complete darkness to get into the house. I knew Noah must have seen something. He was generally worried that I had ran over someone. I got out of the car and opened the front door. When the boys went inside, I shone my torch at keeping my car up the driveway. I didn't see anyone, but I had felt someone watching from afar. <laughs> 